हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू अनदर एपिसोड ऑफ माइंड मैप टुडेज टॉपिक ऑफ डिस्कशन इज नेशनल ग्रीन ट्रिब्यूनल फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट द इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ द टॉपिक देन वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट इट्स स्ट्रक्चर एंड कॉम्पोजिशंस पावर्स एंड फंक्शंस ऑफ एन सिग्निफिकेंस एंड अचीवमेंट्स चैलेंजेस क्रिटिसिज्म एंड वे फॉरवर्ड फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल मूविंग ऑन टू द इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ द टॉपिक The National Green Tribunal has been established on 18 October 2010 under the National Green Tribunal Act 2010. It is a specialized body equipped with the necessary expertise to handle environmental disputes involving multidisciplinary issues. The tribunal shall not be bound by the procedure laid down under the Code of Civil Procedure 1908 but shall be guided by principles of natural justice. The tribunal's dedicated jurisdiction in environmental matters shall provide speedy justice and help reduce the burden of litigation in the higher courts. The tribunal is mandated to make an endeavor for disposal of applications or appeals finally within 6 months of filing of the same. Now moving on to its structure and composition, the NGT operates under the framework of the National Green Tribunal Act 2010. it consists of both judicial and expert members who bring their diverse expertise in the fields of law environment and sciences to the tribunal the chairperson of the ngt is a retired judge of the supreme court of india and the other members include judicial and expert members appointed by the central government the tribunal has a presence in five zones north central east south and west the principal bench is situated in the north zone headquartered in delhi The central zone bench is situated in Bhopal, east zone in Kolkata, south zone in Chennai and west zone in Pune. The tribunal is headed by the chairperson who sits in the principal bench and has at least 10 but not more than 20 judicial members and at least 10 but not more than 20 expert members. Now let's discuss about powers and functions of NGT. The National Green Tribunal Act of India 2010 outlines the functions and powers of the National Green Tribunal. Some of the key functions of the NGT under the Act include the NGT is responsible for hearing and resolving disputes related to environmental issues. It is authorized to hear appeals against orders or decisions made by environmental authorities or other courts related to environmental issues. The NGT has the power to enforce environmental laws and regulations including the power to issue orders injunctions and directions for the protection of the environment. It is responsible for monitoring compliance with environmental laws and regulations and for taking appropriate action in case of violations. The NGT is tasked with promoting environmental justice by ensuring that all citizens have the right to a clean environment. The tribunal has the same powers as of the civil court under the Code of Civil Procedure 1908 while trying a suit. Now let's have a look at its significance and achievements. The establishment of the NGT has brought significant improvements to the environmental governance framework in India. One of its notable achievements is the expeditious disposal of cases which ensures timely justice for environmental disputes. Additionally, the NGT has played a crucial role in promoting the principles of sustainable development and precautionary measures. It has been instrumental in imposing penalties and compensation for environmental damages. It has taken up cases related to air pollution, water pollution, deforestation, waste management, industrial pollution and biodiversity conservation. The tribunal's interventions have resulted in the formulation of stricter regulations, the closure of polluting industries etc some of its achievements include ban on 10 year old diesel vehicles closure of industries around belandur lake ban on plastic in haridwar demolition of illegal constructions in shimla etc now moving on to challenges the ngt decisions have been challenged in various high courts under article 226 Other high courts like the Bombay High Court have also started entertaining appeals against the NGT orders and have asserted the superiority of a high court over the NGT. It says that high court is a constitutional body while NGT is a statutory body. The NGT has no means for effectively supervising and implementing its orders. It has no method to reverse its orders if they are found unworkable or require modification. 
Now let's discuss about its criticism. The NGT recently came under criticism for its handling of Sri Sri Ravi Shankar's World Culture Festival on the flood plains of Yamuna. The NGT has faced criticism for delays in delivering judgments. The backlog of cases has been piling up and it takes years for the tribunal to resolve them. Some critics argue that the NGT lacks independence from the government, which undermines its effectiveness as an independent judicial body. The tribunal is headed by a chairman who is appointed by the central government and there have been allegations of political interference in the appointment of NGT members. The NGT's jurisdiction is limited to certain environmental issues and it cannot address broader issues related to development and sustainability. Now lastly, let's discuss about the way forward. The NGT should focus on efficient case management, prioritize urgent matters and invest in capacity building efforts to strengthen the infrastructure and resources of the tribunal. The tribunal should be equipped to address challenges such as climate change, e-waste management, sustainable urban development, etc. This expansion would enable the NGT to tackle complex environmental issues effectively and provide appropriate remedies and solutions. Additionally, the NGT would benefit from enhanced cooperation and coordination with other judicial bodies, government agencies and civil society organizations. Collaborative efforts can help in sharing expertise, knowledge and resources as well as foster a holistic and integrated approach to environmental governance. Now it's time for the practice question. First of all, prelims question. How is the National Green Tribunal or NGT different from the Central Pollution Control Board? This question was asked in 2018 exam. 1. The NGT has been established by an act whereas the CPCB has been created by the executive order of the government. 2. The NGT provides environmental justice and help reduce the burden of litigation in the higher courts whereas the CPCB promotes cleanliness of streams and wells and aims to improve the quality of air in the country. Which of the statements given above is or are correct? 1 only, 2 only, both 1 and 2 or neither 1 nor 2. And now mains question. What is the mandate of the National Green Tribunal? Critically analyze its performance over the years. So that's all for today. Stay tuned for the next episode. Thanks for watching.